Okay, hindi mi kira loe. Okay. I just scheduled another one for Thursday. Yeah, I saw that come in. That you, it's nothing to do with you. We won't okay. have to. We don't. That one won't go on YouTube or anything. I may not even record it. So. Okay. I may record it just to the. Uh, to the cloud. The to the cloud. cloud. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I can save it for you. Then. Okay. I'll archive it for you. All right. Okay. We're recording. We are live on YouTube. Bless you. I got the awesome idea of taking down my album. They just drove me nuts. I did mine that one Saturday. It wasn't too bad. Right after, right after uh, New Year's. Mm -hmm. So, actually, I had uh, Aaron and Liam, my two grandsons, and they helped me. So it went pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Assume one of these days I'm gonna have my I stopped selling my nephew for a buck a piece, they'll carry all my Christmas totes out to the shed. And there's like six or seven of them on the porch, so that's definitely worth it. <laughs> so 
Hi, Mer. Hi, Paul. Paul, oh, how are you? I'm still Just Michelle Richardson. I'm trying to figure out how to change it. <laughs> Tim? Yeah. Not hearing anybody. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me, Bill? Yeah, I can hear you. Tim, you can hear me? Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, Linda. How everybody? Paul. Uh, Great game this weekend. I'm not hearing anybody. Has, uh, can I, can was. anybody hear me? Yep. Okay, I'm not hearing you guys. So let's see what we're doing here. Can you hear us? I can hear you, Linda. Yeah, I don't think Bill can. I'll start video. Okay. I can't, I'm not hearing anybody. Any thoughts? Yeah, I think we got it. Okay. Tim, say something, will you? We'll see if we got you. He's muted, that's why. Oh, you're muted, Tim. Bill, can you hear us? Now I can, yes. Good. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Linda, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, you're good. David? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Paul, oh, you can hear, right? All right, we're getting... Okay. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. <clears throat> David, I don't hear the puppy. Oh, thank God. He's in there, he's in there playing with his toys. Your hair squeaks in a little while. Uh, we're everybody slowly coming on here. Okay. There's Norm. <laughs> Norm, and what's the other one's name? Snoopy. Snoopy. Yep. We got Norm here. Aww. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Got Snoopy right. He's coming. Then we got the old guy here. Oh, <laughs> they're so <laughs> cute. <laughs> I told them they have to behave. We'll see how that goes. I know. Gizmo will walk <laughs> in and he'll look at me, to see what I'm doing, and then he just walks back out. He wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say the same. <laughs> They want to be in the middle. Oh, oh. yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Hi, Jack. Can you hear us? 
Okay. Hi, Jack. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Jack. Hi, Linda. Welcome back, Jack. Well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Good to it's been see a you. while. <laughs> Okay, we're getting, slowly getting everybody on here. Bob, you can you hear everybody? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everyone. Hi, Bird. Hi. Bird. Hi. Hi Bird. Yeah, try to change my name on here so they will say Vernon, not Vern. <laughs> We know who you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking good in blue. Those are Bill's yeah. color. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. The Washington football team. <laughs> ah. I know at my family, it's Steelers, Bills, and the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. I'll be rooting for uh, Kansas City. Ah. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think very, you got it made though. You have it made. Don't, be, don't, be, ever. don't be bitter now. Oh no, no. <laughs> well, I'm a bitter Steelers fan, so that so was man. So is my daughter Mandy. <laughs> you don't want to talk to her right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, there's always next year. I can't believe I'm having to say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've been waiting since what, 95? <laughs> That's true. Hey, Bill, do you remember when Jim Kelly came to Bonaventure to do one of the uh, sports camps or something years ago? Yes. yes I, I remember did. that. Yes. Yeah, he held his camp here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, my son and uh, Brian Donnelly's son, Matt, Matt Donnelly, they have pictures with uh, Jim Kelly and Dan Marino. Wow. Uh, you know, when Dan Marino was here to help out during that, so. Yep, I remember going down and um, picking up somebody and he was walking off the field. It was pretty cool, but he was here. What was the name of the hotel down there? The, where the uh, it was the uh, Holiday Inn was down there at the time, uh, and then there was also they had the Castle Inn, which mm -hmm. was right across you know across the street there from uh, actually it's where the Community Bank built their their uh, 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 mortgage department down there. So you had the Castle Inn, and a lot of them stayed at the Holiday Inn. Yep. Yep. That was right where. Uh, uh, the Kmart is. Yeah, that area. Uh, yep. I, I do remember that. That was around when I first came here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there was the DeSoto was there also. Oh, yeah. Remember, that's where uh, that's where the, uh, the new tool place is there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I remember the par three at the castle. That was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. We're aging ourselves, Bill. Oh, way back. Yep. <laughs> I can remember watching Bob Lanier play as a freshman when they had you had the freshman team and they had to play a year, you know, as a freshman before they could move on to the uh, to the uh, varsity. I guess you'd, guess you'd call it the varsity back then. So, wow. I can remember taking care of Bob Lanier when I was a student nurse. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Hey. Hi, Kevin. I'm running a bit late. I had uh, a certain alderman ran out of gas. Well, that's funny because I was on time. Oh, yeah. You're still in your vehicle, alderman who ran out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized my new tumbler came in and it wasn't washed so leftist tears got my daily wire tumbler hmm. wash that and get some water in it was that your dog you took to the vet today kevin our new one yeah we got 
supposed to pick him up on like Friday or Saturday and the neighbor of the lady who had him called us and she was like, listen, she doesn't have any money to take this dog to the vet. Like you need to step in and like, can you help out? And so I went all the way out to Uba Dam Road and picked the dog up and drove him to Dr. Kelly. Kevin, what does that mug say? Uh, leftist Tears. Oh, that's cool. I don't think anybody on the left's going to be crying tomorrow. Nope. <laughs> Hi, John. Hello, everyone. How we doing? Wonderful. How's everyone doing? Super. Good. Lance, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm just here to guys. That's all. Okay. Very good. Um, anybody? Let's see. We've got one two, three, four, five, six. So uh, we good to go? Good to go. Okay. <clears throat> so I'd like to call to order the strategic planning committee for Tuesday, January 19th, uh, 2021. Uh, so uh, let the record show that all committee members are present. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous committee meeting. Could I get a second, please? Second. Second by Alderman Gonzalez. All in favor? Aye. 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 The opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we have no unfinished business, but we have a new referral for consideration. So uh, without uh, further ado, in the moment we've all been waiting for, um, we have a, a presentation tonight on the Cattaraugus County. Hey, I uh, to, I'm, not, I'm just watching. I'm sorry. All right. Just FYI, if you are uh, on standby or watching, uh, you can go ahead and mute yourself. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Cattaraugus County Olean Airport by uh, Director Ring. So uh, Mr. Ring, how would you like to uh, do this? Uh, are, do you have the ability to share your screen or do I need to make you the host or does Bill, uh, does the mayor need to, somebody have to make you the host or? Look at that. What is that like? Wow. Got it. Okay. Right. We can see it. All right. Um, you know, at, at all of your requests, I put together as much pertinent information as I could collect on the airport, um, as well as, you know, the things that, that you'd requested. And I, I tried to be comprehensive. Feel free to ask any questions. And if I can't answer them, I can get back to you on another time. Um, starting with a quick inventory, you know, if you've never been up there, um, you know, this is the layout of the airport looking north obviously an aerial view. Um, you know, there's one main runway, one main blacktop runway that's 4,800 feet long. There's also a grass runway and you can't see that from the main hangar. Um, on days where the wind might be really high and you've got a small plane, they can land there. Um, in some cases, you know, they do. If they have to land in only in, like if their hangar rental is there, um, they'll use that runway as backup. We have to maintain it, you know, mowing it at a certain height for FAA regulations. Um, our, our big building, the main hangar and offices, there's also a snow removal equipment building attached to it, um, you know, is, is there in the center. And then the two long white buildings are our T hangers. One that was built, um, I would guess around 2010, uh, it was fairly new, and then a, an old T hanger that was built many years ago in the 70s or 80s. Um, that's pretty run down, but they each hold uh, 10 different hangar rentals. Um, there's also a landfill. So the city used to haul their waste to this landfill. It's closed, but landfill regulation, you know, we're required to monitor um, seepage, uh, monitor the methane gas that's given off through the vents and things like that. Um, so that's kind of north, northwest, or sorry, north, northeast of, of the runway there. 
and it extends for maybe a thousand feet along uh, that hill. Hey, Bob, don't we have some costs that go along with that landfill, something to do with fines we pay because it exists or something? We pay about 25000 a year to just monitor it. So we have a company that goes out and samples it quarterly. They sample the monitor well and then test the water. And then every once in a while, DEC comes down and does an inspection um, you know, on, on seepage, on leachate. Um, the water resources. They did all of Western New York the first year I was here, and to see the ranking, they were, they were meant to to rank all the landfills in Western New York and then tackle the worst ones first. It could be water quality, and I again I haven't heard anything back from that inspection. Here's. Do we, is there like a, is there an end in sight for that thing or is this like going for I was, forever? I was going to say, Jason, there, the counties just fell off after like 30, 35 years and we closed ours shortly after the county did. So I believe ours is probably on par for that. And I was going to ask Bob that same question. I don't know that. I can look that up. I guess I'd be surprised if it was that short of a time frame. But they may have sophisticated landfill. A lot of them now are way more sophisticated than they used to be. They're built in layers of clay, and they also have collection systems. Ours doesn't have a collection system. So I'll, I'll look into that just out of curiosity. But yeah, we're going to approach about extending our contract with the consultant that comes in and does the sampling and, and monitoring. But that cost has been pretty much the same year after year since I've been. Some of our goals, obviously maintenance is really our biggest thing. Um, trying to provide the best service that we can to the public up there. Um, you know, again, if you've been up there, it's a nice facility. Um, 20 years ago, it was really, really run down. Um, you know, the ceiling tiles were falling through. It was, you know, it, it was just, it hadn't been maintained very well. Uh, at the time, I don't think we were applying for FAA grants. Um, the runway was being maintained by our street screw. And again, it just kind of got in disrepair. The old hangers were the only 10 bay hanger we had up there was starting to you know, age and, and get into disrepair. And then, uh, you know, about 10 or 15 years ago, we started taking on capital projects and building it up and maintaining it. It's in a really good place right now. Um, so we're again, just trying to keep it at the service level that it's at more than anything, we provide Wi Fi up there. Obviously, that's needed for our staff, but we provide it for pilots that may have to lay over. They may bring a client here that has to do business in Olean or wherever. And the pilot may, you know, they may take the crew car, which we provide um, to anybody who might be flying into the airport. And the pilot just kind of hangs out. So there's a lounge there, there's magazines, there's, there's TV with Netflix. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the office area. I listed important things, you know, that the air airport provides, um, you know, including support to our businesses. Uh, you know, it's the only paid runway in Cattaraugus County. There's an interesting tidbit about Mercy Flight. So if they, if there's fog in the valley, um, Mercy flight can't take off. So what they do is they taxi with they taxi a helicopter up to the airport and take off from there. Um, so without our airport so close to Mercy flight, there's days where they wouldn't be able to take off due to fog. And I don't think it's that often, but you know our airport is their go-to as you know by far the closest airport for uh, Mercy flight to utilize. There are a lot of people that just like to fly out of our airport for recreation purposes, you know, local people um, from Olean that keep a plane up there and just go flying for the day um, or use it for business, you know, in the case of Napoleon Engineering and others. You know, the council requested a flight log. This is what our data shows for the last five years, pretty steady use. That's um, a single 
you know, a, a count or a tally for uh, arrival and a tally for a departure. So those are in and out. Um, it is only tracked from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. when we have staff on. There's so, hey, Bob, just to, just to clarify. So you're saying when someone lands, or I'm sorry, when someone takes off and then someone lands, that, that's counted as two flights? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, at night, there's times where, you know, when people are flying overhead, their systems can show where fuel is and the price of fuel as well. And, you know, we try to keep our, our fuel prices as low as possible. So in some cases, um, times that aren't 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., there are people just landing, you know, and getting fuel because we have a 24-7 credit card machine um, in order to get fuel, and then they take back off. So those aren't tracked, but I think those are probably fairly minimal. Can I ask you a question, Bob, uh, in regards to this? So, sure. I mean, it, it's it's no surprise uh, that the the summer months, you know, seem to be, and especially July and August are, are pretty peak uh, in terms of usage. Um, but I'm, I'm, I guess this is where your experience with what the FAA requires, you know, the, the winter months, which I can figure is probably one of the more uh, capital intensive as far as you've got to plow the runway, you got to salt the runway or whatever, uh, you know, de-ice planes and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, December, January, February, I mean, February effectively now uh, last year, you know, had what, four, four planes, uh, you know, either land and take off or whatever. Um, are we required to to operate these uh, this facility year round, 12 uh, months a year? Um, I don't think, I mean, we have to maintain it, meaning I think we would have to plow, you know, have, to have staff there full time. We've been looking into that, you know, for quite some time, whether we, you know, we don't always have staff there on the weekends. And obviously we don't have staff there after four o'clock, but if a plane wanted to land, they're in place to where they can call our airport and we can go out and clear it off. I see. We want to be accommodating, you know, to people. You know, well, there's, I, I agree with accommodation, but there's a certain degree of accommodation, right? I mean, when you're talking about four planes in February, <laughs> you know, that's, that's really accommodating, I guess, you know, it, it's, it's about usage, right? So then the alternative is, well, then how do you get back to having, you know, 50 planes uh, or, or, you know, increase the usage? Um, but, but anyways, I guess, I guess my, my question was, you know, could the, could the airport effectively have a shutdown December, January, February, um, you know, under the, the guidelines that we, we're operating under. I can certainly look into it. Um, you know, I, we would still obviously have to heat the building and provide some access, but um, you know, with our fueling station, people really couldn't plan unless the runway were cleared. So I think that would have to continue. Um, and I mean, I, and, and to your to your to your point, if if, if you're spending the money to to, if you have to heat the facility anyways, and, and you've got a, you know, maybe it's a marginal potential savings there. It just doesn't seem to be heavily utilized during those months. So, you know, trying to think, is there reduced, reduced hours? You know, I, I don't know, something that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think all those solutions are gonna come in one session, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Once, once we get to the budget numbers and kind of things out or at least you know and you'll see how the progress that we've made up to this point and you know put together a pool of ideas that could yeah. be cost saving measures yeah or okay. measures and talk Thanks, about Bob. all at um, once. Bob 
can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, Linda, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Um, and maybe this is more for the mayor. Have we asked to be reassessed or our taxes decreased from issue A, or is that something that's just fixed? Because I think it's what, 13000 or 16000 a year we pay? Uh, we have been, uh, we have uh, uh, been waiting and uh, uh, I'm not sure if, if uh, Nick relayed the information to Jack or not, but the the assessment is uh, uh, we have asked for a what, what is it when you ask for your assessment to be reviewed, Jack? Uh, grievance. Yeah, we filed a grievance on our taxes. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, we've been waiting to uh, 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 get that reviewed. So. Okay. Thanks. I just was curious. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bill. Um, Bob, real quick, we, we rent the airport all year round and we don't decrease re, uh, rent even during the slow months. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's the same year round. Okay, just to, just to kind of throw that out there for the discussion as well, because I'd, I'd hate to be renting it out to a group of people and they're expecting, you know, some sort of level of service. And we're not now we're not, uh, you know, plowing the runways re, uh, frequently or, you know, maintaining, you know, the fuel supply and things like that. Just just something else to throw out there. Yeah, and I mean, in the in the defense of those numbers too, just from experience up there, I think they're a little low. Plus, in the winter, you got uh, Bob's employees are are out there plowing snow, and things. some things will some land take uh, happen that don't get recorded too. Just to kind of ease your mind on how low those numbers are, John. Uh, moving on to kind of the budget discussion. So between all our efforts, I started with, with the gear that I got here. We reduced the budget pretty significantly. You know, I've done some things. I know that we've reduced the fuel cell, the, the fuel number in the budget. Um, you know, and you also see the expenditures of, of matched the lowered budget um, in, our, in the way that we've We've completed projects, but every year we've lowered it since I've been here. Between you know staff not being there on the weekend as much, um, doing fewer projects um, through budgeted funds. So I compared a. I wanted to take a twelve-month fiscal budget and do a you know revenue and expenditures report. I did this again in 2017 and 18. And for those of you that were here, we passed it on to the council. I don't think it was much of a discussion, but that loss at the time, and it included a $15,000 grant funding match with 116000 This past year, our losses, again, through everybody's efforts, we are, are making a noticeable difference to the bottom line up there. So Bob, what, what was it that contributed to this um, 100K drop almost here? A couple of things and we've run it, we've raised rental fees in the last couple of years, um, $25 a month, I wanna say one year, and 15 or $20 the next year, well, that helped. Fuel sales and, and just monitoring that closely. You know, every couple of weeks, we look at fuel sales up there. We try to be the place to go for fuel because we actually make really significant profit gallon gallon up there. Um, we had some luck, and we had Elsie um, Whitford, a company out of Cuba. They had two large planes up there, and actually one just crashed. You know, I think it was just a minor thing, but They've since left our airport, unfortunately, but they use jet fuel and they're using hundreds of gallons of fuel. Um, that helped us a lot this particular year. You know, other small things, we did LED conversions to our lights. Our electricians division were up there converting lights. Um, at the time I got here, there was like 250 channel on the cable TV that they had up there. We just got rid of it and we got Netflix. 
we were paying like $85 per month um, in cable. And we just got rid of it and used our Wi Fi and got an F6 faster. I don't know if there. So, um, a little yeah, bit of the 50% increase in the fuel for the vehicles. Where, where do you see that? Use the 20, 19 to 20 budget was three grand. Oh, oh yeah. that was budgeted. Sorry, but the, uh, it was, uh, the expenditures were seven grand. I think that was either likely an encumbrance or when they buy fuel, you know, it's a bulk sale. So it could have been over two budgets. They just happened to order twice that year instead, like, or multiple times that year. I don't have those exact numbers right in front of me, but that was more than likely what happened. Hey, hey Bob. Was the um, <clears throat> was the drop uh, in the expected fuel for for resale? Was it due to just lower demand, or was it uh, due to lower uh, fuel price? Any ideas? The revenue from fuel sales, or the fuel for vehicles buying? No, the we expected seventy thousand, and it dropped to forty one thousand for aviation fuel for resale. Oh right, right. Was it was it due to the, that we just there was less demand, so we didn't have to order it, or or was it uh, due to dropping fuel prices? I I don't know. I'd I'd have to look into it okay. a little further. But obviously, oil is about as good as it can get right now. So that could have been we budgeted on based on previous year numbers and put a safe number in there, and then because you've seen the output from from planes landing, it's about the same year after year. So I would guess that's right. Likely call for there. Right. Bob, which of these is it the top line that includes the employees? Or is that not shown here? That's one of the land. That's personal service, yep. Okay. Some of our additional revenue sources besides fuel sales and rental fees over the years. So Cataraugus County gives us typically 17500 every year. Um, here I was here, we use that for a light project. Um, the next two years, we had a problem with a fuel pump that needed to be replaced. We worked on it and we worked on it. And we went, we worked with the company on engineering, um, put it out the bid. We used two years, <clears throat> excuse me, county funding in order to complete that project, which was 100% funded. In 2020, we used it as a FAA grant match, grant match, and then this previous year, as you know, they gave us 85,000 um, know, for the runway project. 2016, you know, the airport is on 400 acres. A lot of it's wooded. We had a manager there, the timber industry, and we had uh, you know, some significant revenue. I recently spoke to him about the second project up there, and it won't be as lucrative as the first one. Timber improvement, so they would go in and take medium-sized trees out from them and just chip everything, but they would still pay us. And they'll get some revenue from it. So that's something that's kind of been in the works recently. And then we rely a lot on DOT and FAA grants. 95% funded with 5% local match. The events up there, if any of you attended them, the Halloween event, the pancake breakfast that are put on by the airport support group. And typically they donate either half or all of their proceeds to us to, for a project. You know, they bought a windsock one year, they replaced the bulb on um, our beak one year, and small projects like that, but it helps. You know, they identify the project and they raise money for it. Purchase it. Bob, is that collectively that 13 grand? Right. So, yeah, 13,000 over five years. Not. 
How much, hey Bob, quick question. How, how much timber, is there timber remaining up there? It really needs time to grow in again. A lot of like the maples and the cherries and the long trees that could actually be turned into lumber. But there too, and um, emerald ash borers hit our area. So they want to go in and take a lot of the ash and turn into something before it all just dies and falls over and makes it difficult for other trees to grow up. So that's the idea that there's quite a rush for that going on right now. It, um, with the with the market demanding more lumber and stuff like that, they're pushing a lot of these, but most typical turnovers, you'll take a plot of land and you'll completely harvest it within 30 years, but split it in two different categories of 15 year cycles. Uh, I've been dealing with the county on this and a lot of their properties and working with them and learning quite a bit from their lumber experts, so. Yeah, it's a positive. It's going to be some time before we get another, you know, six-figure um, revenue source, I think. So we've also reduced costs by planning on our projects around the grant funding that we get. You know, I identified several years ago that our HVAC needed to be replaced. Um, a grant came available through Joe Gilio's office and we applied for it and we got it. It's 100% funded. We're expecting all that work to be done um, in the spring or in the summer. And, you know, we won't have to worry about those HVAC units for another 20 years. I mentioned that, um, that, that had been a problem for a couple of years when I came on and we waited for grant funding to take it on. The runway rehabilitation project, you know, you all asked us to come up with a plan for that project. I think we've done a good job getting that $2.8 million project down as low as we can. Um, the most recent stimulus they passed had an additional 20,000 in CARES funding. So it's possible that match will be 20,000, will be 5,000 um, instead of 25,000, or we could use it for a future project since we have a couple of big projects coming up. What is that CARES, what is the CARES funding, how does it read? Is it just for a municipal projects or is it specifically for municipal airports? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Our consultant um, told us how much we got. I assume, you know, when, when the stimulus was written, um, money was allotted to local airports and there's just an algorithm that depending on the size of the airport. Yeah, that, the federal stimulus package, it was, uh, there, there was money in there for airports and uh, that was the, uh, the uh, 30,000 we got. And uh, Bob is just telling about there's uh, uh, potentially now another 20,000 in the uh, current stimulus package. Uh, we're laid out for the best of my knowledge and from uh, uh, what I, what I uh, saw on this was uh, for airports. Okay. All right. Thank you. Getting into FAA projects, um, we work with a consultant uh, from CNS Engineers, and Mayor and I have occasional calls with their project manager. He's really great. They walk us through the whole process. You guys have been through passing resolutions for the grant applications. I think you've seen this spreadsheet before on our five-year plan. It's really the focus being on the next couple of years, those big projects um, on the runway and the taxiway. You know, I'm trying to fund those to get over that hurdle, that big hurdle, that big monetary commitment. And a, a big reason is it's starting to, to deteriorate. And I've got a couple of pictures you know, it's just not something that they're to maintain as a city. There's cracks, you know, that are that are really growing in size. Um, we can't. Uh, it's not acceptable to have a pothole on a runway. It's, it's a safety hazard. A lot of planes don't have suspension. Um, they're not like our roads. I've got a note in there um, that, that you all have asked about in the past. 
So the grant is the grant assurance is essentially when you take funding from FAA, you are tied to it for 20 years. So if you take their money and then you close down the airport, you owe 100% back the first year, right? And then it reduces by 5% annually for 20 years. Whatever, and so there is a tie to FAA funding. The life of a, a grant is um, reduced over 20 years. So through the FAA grant funding, we've been able to replace equipment, uh, the T-hanger, um, the new T-hanger that we had was a funded project, lighting systems, um, remodeling uh, of the um, offices and things were all, were all grant funded. Typically FAA points in the direction of what they want us to do. And right now, um, runway and ramp research projects are high up on their list. So um, besides the fact that our runway is starting to deteriorate, really prioritizing right now. And here's a couple pictures of the runway. You know, I think I explained these the last time you know, we talked. Um, you know, at the cold joints, it's really separating. You know, we've tried to crack seal these, but it's just impossible to maintain it um, anymore between, I just, I can't, out of the year to send my crew up to Blacktop Patch at the airport um, and, and then send another crew up to crack the deal every year um, with opportunity to, to fund the runway project. I think it just makes sense financially even to um, fix, fix these issues that have become, you know, a persistent complaint from our pilots and the some of the issues that these are, so these will lead to eventual potholes where you start to see the base failure in there. Is anybody else thinking about a flex seal challenge here? Or is that just me? About what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, a flex seal challenge. You know that guy on TV that sells that seal? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. I don't know if it's work up there. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. I just, I couldn't help it. This is my last slide. Um, so our needs going forward, these are just my suggestions. Um, I mean, it'd be great to have an airport manager, a full-time staff up there. You know, the times that I've thought about it or, or the mayor and I have talked about it, it's really hard to justify spending more money up there, right? There's We've exhausted a lot of the revenue sources. Um, you know, we've looked into creative things like a fixed base operator who would basically take over management of the airport. That just didn't really bear any fruit. Um, you know, but the current manager is 76 years old and it's the whole thing is run by part timers. So, you know, whatever creative ideas that we come up with, we can make the best effort we can in the city or you know, with a part-time staff, but um, it'd be interesting, I guess, not just interesting, but it really, to, to do the place justice, it really could use a full-timer or somebody who really dedicates their time up there to, to it and trying to grow into something, um, helping promote businesses and making calls to, why aren't you using the airport? What can we do to, to help you out? You know, what are the services that we can make better? For you to use the airport more. You know, we need we need more support from the county, not more support, but continued support of of that that higher um, financial commitment uh, and, and share the load with with our losses. Maybe reduce that down even more over time. And then you know, again, we it's great to have your support. And you've all, all supported it up to this point, and I hope we can get through these next couple big projects. Um, we're gonna be submitting a pre-app, the runway project 
on January 29th um, you know, with, with all your permission. Um, and, you know, we're trying to raise money for us, and I'm hoping you'll support the project. And you know, we'll do our best to continue exploring and new revenues whenever we can to help with grant matches, new projects, so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. Uh, questions, comments, suggestions. Anything? Yes. All the By any chance that we thought about creating uh, more hangers to expand on uh, making money there? Yeah. That. So what I got here. Um, the idea was to take down the old tea hanger. Um, so we had full capacity of our hangers up to like the pandemic and now we have only eight out of ten of the old tea hangers we have a waiting list for the new tea hangers but we talked about it and we would have to demo the existing tea hangers the old ones which means all those planes would have to move out of our airport and over the course of probably two years we'd have to build a new one which potentially we could expand like away from the main hangar It was, we thought, it, at least at the time, it was too risky to take down the old one. Um, and we thought maybe we could refurbish them. I don't know if anybody's been in those old tea hangers, but they're in pretty rough shape. They are. So, I mean, the only thought I have there, Bob, I know some of it, I mean, just, and it's in, I don't have a close relationship up there these days, but uh, even though some of those, where you were somewhere like active, you know, they had an old plane, they were storing or thought about doing, but they were paying to sort there and not much happening. So I have a feeling if we did some deeper checking with who the customers are, we may be closer to the ability to empty those out for an amount of time to do that work than we think. Yeah. And if it comes down to just a couple of planes, we have space to move them in the air for a project like that. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, the FAA won't currently fund construction projects. Maybe, yeah. fast, but. Bob, do we still have planes in the main hangar? Yes. Okay, how many do we currently have in there? Five or six. Okay. We we have a helicopter, I think, in there. Um, oh. <laughs> the rental cost of the main hangar is based on wingspan. Um, we calculated oh. the size of the plane because there's only room for maybe eight planes in there. Right. And the, the, the sort of an expansion of the main hangar, that's, that's not a feasible project. Um, yeah, we looked into it. The, the doors are, are a persistent problem there, and replacing them would be a good idea. But we applied for a grant one year, we didn't get it, and we kind of went waiting around for the right opportunity. To, um, but I suppose you could, if, if the doors were just abandoned, you could expand off the front and have more hangar space there. With That's a what I mean, that's what I'm wondering. And, and we don't have to have the brainstorming session, you know, tonight. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just, you know, um, if, if that really hangar space seems to be a really good source of, of revenue for us and we have a waiting, we have a waiting list, then there's a demand for it. And, and at some point, you know, yeah, it would cost money to obviously invest in that, but but maybe the break even on it, you know, is three, four, five years. I mean, I don't know. We'd, we'd have to run the, that analysis. But at some point, then it just is gravy, and, and we continue to, and it helps to balance our our budget up there. Yeah, it's a good idea because we talked about a million dollars to replace the doors, but you know, a small Kessel building like that or Butler building wouldn't really be that much you know, to expand, and it also wouldn't need that much more heat. Um, you know, 
Bob, yeah. who applied for that grant that wasn't funded? The um, the door grant, the um, hangar door. I think that might have been a multimodal grant. Either it was in process when I got here, or CNS it applied for us on our behalf. So what was the funding source that was applied for? EOT. New York State or federal? New York State. Yeah, I don't I don't recall that one at all. Okay. Hmm. The story I had was Tracy and Doug did either when right before I got here or had applied for a grant but was turned down. I'll look into what I got paperwork wise. Yeah, I'd be curious to see uh yeah, what the funding source was. And, and if you have the application, I'd like to review it and see what was done. Yeah. Should have gone to you, Carrie. What's that? They should have forwarded that to you instead of trying to handle <laughs> their own up there as the part-timers at the airport. <laughs> um, so could you could you just, um, as you look into that, that grant as well, Bob, could that be something you could get us more information on to, to what you know, and, and like I said, we can have some follow up uh, work sessions on this. Um, but but that would be just again, you don't know unless you have some numbers in front of you. And, uh, you know, as we as we try to brainstorm on this. Um, additionally, and, and for the record, uh, because I know this is something that gets talked about. That's a great picture right there, Bob. Um, it gets talked about a lot in, in in the public and there's kind of i don't want to say a lack of understanding of the way it, it's designed up there and what you have to work with but the people you know the ideas are always well why don't you just expand the runway and then you can get bigger planes to, to utilize the facility why don't uh you know why can't we be like jamestown um and, and have uh commercial flights uh in or in and out of there um, can you speak to kind of a the geography uh, the, the limitations and then at least from my understanding the, the FAA isn't handing out like the I don't know commercial airport licenses or whatever it's called I, can you can you kind of just talk a little bit about that please <coughs> if, if I may interject first uh, sure. with that uh, back uh, when I was on a county legislature and it was under under Linda's administration, there was a study done uh, uh, for uh, for the uh, county uh, Cattaraugus County Olean Airport. And mm -hmm. as part of that study, uh, they were looking uh, to the possibility of expanding the runway. And uh, it, it, from my understanding, uh, when the report came out, and I do have copies of that report uh, in my office, but at the, it would be the, um, I guess you would say the southeast, uh, southwest end of the runway, the, it drops off so quickly that mm -hmm. to expand uh, the runway would cost prohibitive to bring in uh, you know, the fill that would, was needed to, to uh, bring it up to where we could accept bigger, bigger planes. So uh, that, that, uh, that study is available. So, uh, so I just want everybody to know that. So Bob, uh, go ahead. I don't have a lot to add because I haven't really looked into it that much, but from what I understand, let's just say in 1980, you know, around then, um, airports that weren't commercial carriers at the time wouldn't be subsidized by the FAA. So a new airport built for commercial carrying today, I don't think is FAA going to be FAA subsidized. At least I haven't, you know, I think that's what our consultants told us. Okay, so in other words, the smaller airports that do have that commercial carrier designation the only way they sustain or operate is through subsidy from the government. Right. Through okay. the same beginning. Right. Right. So if we looked at that, we would most likely not be eligible for that. But that's that's always something that I know I feel those questions. Um, yeah. 
you know, expand, I mean, yeah, expand I, the I, runway and then, and then the other thing. So, sorry, Jason, go ahead. Uh, well, the last page of Bob's presentation, I mean, it's the uh, airport manager. I think if, if we're going to take a chance of getting this airport into a, um, you know, more revenue and making money, I feel like that's where, where we need to go. Um, you've got a support group, and if you have a manager to lead that airport, you has got a passion for it. just somebody to fill a position. Somebody that is going to have a passion to take on the challenge of making that place profitable. Um, and then they link up with that supporter, which is already, you've got a committee kind of sitting there that knows about the airport, knows who uses it. And uh, I think that's the road we ought to try, try going, or at least that's my input. Um, and we still have, you know, he mentioned the uh, man now he's getting up in age, you know, who, who knows how long he'll work or, or be there. And I think there's also an opportunity where that person being around while someone new comes in would be a huge asset. Um, they not take advantage of it. Anybody else not understand 90% I mean, Bruce, of Bruce has been involved in, Bruce has been involved in that airport for, I think, over 40 years. So he's seen it go up and down in the different economies for, for a long time. Well, and I, um, you know, I, 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 I agree. Um, and I see, you know, on this side, uh, on this slide, it talks about um, continued support, uh, you know, from the county, from the council, but, but also, you know, I mean, you've got on there from the CEO Alliance and OBD um, and, and even St. Bonaventure. And, um, you know, I, I realized they, um, those organizations uh, reached out with, with letters of support. We all, we all received those. Um, and, and I guess I would, I would ask for, for their participation and their, in their usage of, of, our, of our facility. Um, we talk about keeping business local. Um, you know, how, how do we get from what I recall, St. Bonaventure's, you know, athletic teams used to use our airport, but I don't believe they do anymore. Um, uh, you know, how do we, how do we really come together to support each other and, um, and, and have our local businesses? I, I know Dresser Rand used to use the airport. Vince Volpe was flying in and out of there, but I don't think that happens anymore. So how can we collaborate with these organizations um, to help, you know, support local. Um, and, and is there opportunity there, I guess? And that's really, you know, on, on Bob and the mayor, but, but all of us too. I think the opportunity out there, I mean, the National Guard is another group that, you know, we've tried to partner with, or, you know, we have in minor ways, but, you know, a lot of those take long, long negotiations or you know, a lot of work to spend with them. And, you know, there are a lot of ideas I think that could be explored if it needs the right person to spend it and be passionate about it or the right group. Mm -hmm. um, uh, go ahead, Kevin. Oh, no, I, I, I thought of, uh, Bob, if you had that, was it the first image there, the big overview of the airport, the, the nice clear image that John likes so much? Um, that one right there, when, when you showed that image, I actually, it occurred to me, I remember a few years ago, we, we spent the, the, the timber right money to put in a fence to prevent deer from getting into the, to the, the, the runway, because they were smashing down an old fence that was inferior and they were still blocking planes and we had issues. Um, and uh, I don't know if it's my most recent, like, um, um, getting into hunting in the last year or so but uh like the state does this with a lot of their land they'll make you fill out like a form and stuff like that or you just you know you go get a little permit from them for 25 or whatever bucks and as long as you have a, a permit maybe maybe that would be a revenue source it's a lot that we have 407 acres of land up there i'm sure it's just like any other place that you could go that the state owns or other municipalities own that you can just you know kind of entice people to go up there and take care of some of our deer problems up there as well as you know, generating some revenue for the city. Just a thought. Uh, John, if it's okay, I'll, I got a comment. Sure, Bill. 
Okay, uh, and I mentioned this before, uh, to, to uh, get a better understanding at county level, uh, Frank Higgins and I will be setting up a, a uh, I guess you could call it a, a task force to take a look at uh, uh, how, how, uh, how we can get the county more involved in the airport. So uh, uh, I'm meeting with him uh, Thursday to discuss the makeup of this and uh, uh, and uh, so I'll, I'll report back. Uh, we're going to have uh, we'll have city officials. Uh, uh, I think we should have uh, representatives of uh, OBD or representative uh, different groups like that, and uh, the, uh, the support group, uh, the county. Uh, so we'll be uh, we'll be putting this together. So it'll be a like an ad hoc committee to uh, to take a look at how can we uh, how can we get the county more involved and how can we promote the airport uh, better? So. Great. Great. Yeah, I, I look forward to that. That's, um, and that's what, that's what's needed. I mean, it's, um, it is, it is a good facility if, if people would just use it. And so, you know, it, uh, you know, and I, I think it would be beneficial to, to see the cost breakdown. I mean, you know, Jason, obviously is, is pretty well versed with the airport, probably better than, than any of us as far as, you know, with his background. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe the, uh, the full-time manager is, is something that is a benefit that is a, a way to, to, to go. What would that talk look like? And um, so it would be great to just kind of put a list of ideas. And I, I guess I would ask all of you to, to do that. Uh, and we can have uh, maybe after the mayor has a uh, discussion with with uh, Frank Higgins and and what the strategy is there, um, what some of our ideas are as we are heading into budget season coming up here, and uh, and just work together. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay. Um, Anything else? I guess we will. Thank you, uh, Director Ring. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we can stop sharing, perhaps. Is that the airport too, Bob? Yeah, that's the uh, <laughs> that's a view from the, uh, the, the, the looking north. So, so uh, that's all we have on uh, the agenda. Um, so anything else before we move along? OK. Um, so there's no approval of committee reports. So then I will make a motion to adjourn. Could I get a second, please? Oh, seconded. Seconded by Alderman Doherty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, oh. carries everyone. Thank you very much. That's this is the only thing for tonight, right? So we're good. All right. Okay. Everybody have a good night. Good you night. too. Bye-bye. Everybody. Good night, everyone. <laughs>